So I got it on Sport Plus mode at the moment. Um, it's got Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. And you can really feel the acceleration when you use Sport Plus. I'm just going from that turn to 60 and I'm there. Now that's a very fast Nero 60. And I would like to test it from a dead stop just going straight, but that's in the Sport Plus mode. So even though this car looks like it's kind of just a grocery getter and maybe the suburban soccer mom car. It's got some serious kick to it. With ample room in the back seat, you don't have to worry about your kids or even adults having any trouble sitting back here. I have my seat all the way back and I'm almost six foot tall and it makes me very comfortable to sit up there knowing my kids can be back here or some adults can be back here and have plenty of leg room. You obviously have the center divider where it comes down as a cup holder and that also can lead to some nice compartment space as well as your cup holders and it slides back in seamlessly it wouldn't be the most comfortable thing to sit against for a very very long ride but that's very soft and so someone in the middle seat as long as they don't mind the hump wouldn't have too much issues with that the trunk is pretty awesome. It's pretty high tech. Um, all you have to do is give it a good click and it opens. You don't have to lift it manually. In fact, that'll confuse it. <laughs> what's really cool is it comes with a lot of features and a lot of uh, safety features. It comes with a net you can put across the whole entire floor. And it comes with a, a, a first aid kit. That's a Mercedes thing if you didn't know. Another thing it comes with is this handy basket. He's like, I, it took me forever to figure out what this was for. And apparently, it's for groceries. You just uh, see if I can do this with one hand. And voila, we have a basket. Something like my basketball can go in there so it stops rolling around all the dang time. And your Mercedes should come with this handy little cover. So you can cover all your valuables and nobody will steal them because they can't see inside. <laughs> to close it, Obviously just push the button and now she goes, pretty simple. With the GLC 300 models, you have three types. There's the base model, then the 4Matic, and then after that you got the AMG. AMG is very deluxe and I don't have that. <laughs> but with this 4Matic, I basically have four wheel drive whenever I want and it comes with features like different settings and different drive modes. The driver's door has many features you can go over and it'll take you a while to get used to them all. Obviously there's your unlock and lock button, you're adjusting your mirrors, your windows, heated seats, and seat adjustment. And the seat alone with the multi-contour seat adjustment is pretty amazing. You push this button and you got a way to adjust the seat just below your legs. And obviously the rest are pretty self-explanatory and you can also Put them at settings so you can have three different people have three different settings and it'll automatically go to them coming into the driver's seat starting this bad boy up we have down here the volume control the power to the stereo the traction control the auto stop where it turns off the car when you come to a complete stop at a stoplight or stop sign that may last too long got manual mode where you can use these paddles and the control for different drive modes and of course we have this amazing feature it turns but it also rocks back and forth and you have the back button and the home button so as you can see if I rock it to the side I'm getting a different radio station if I turn it I'm also getting a different radio station so that does multiple things I push the home button and this is the home for the 2019 version. I can rock it, move it, spin it. I can go to navigation. So when you do navigation, you have to also push down directly on that button. And it wants to find out where you're gonna go. 
once you're at the navigation screen and you do have the memory card that you have to put into the center console right there you have to get an SD card to be able to do navigation. You push the speech button on the steering wheel. Find a place. Walmart. Number one. Navigate. Proceed to highlighted route. It's a very clean, crisp voice. There actually was three voice options. I chose that one because it seems like the most clearest and most nicest voice. There was another man's voice and another female voice. You can choose. So going back to the home screen, you have everything from radio to multimedia to telephone, the vehicle, inter the vehicle information. You have searches and different parts of your navigation down here. You can also add buttons, which I've done. Android Auto and Tag the Song, Consumption. So when you go to media, you have a couple options of connecting your phone. You can do it through Bluetooth, which obviously mine, I disconnected it. But you also have Android Auto and Apple Play, where you would have to connect it through the cord that's connected through USB in the middle. So also in the car, we have a navigation radio media CD player, because it's 2019, <laughs> the car, the telephone, and your hazard lights as well as all your temperature controls. You can also navigate through the menu right here. So it gives you a multiple of options to navigate through the menu. We come over here to the steering wheel. As I have said before, this is all for navigation, the Google Assistant when you have Android Auto connected, your, your uh, speakers and your volume, your phone. And then over here, you have a lot of the menu options for the center. So when I push home, it takes me to different options. I can scroll through with the buttons and it has many options that you can go through. You have to sit down with this car and take a couple hours every now and then to learn the different settings and the different things you wanna have up on your screens. This is an assisted graphic to help you when you're sleeping at night to make sure that you are not falling asleep, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. Go back home and it's got just a multitude of things. Like I said, you really just need to go through and Check it out yourself if you ever have this vehicle and figure out the ones that you're going to want. Hey, I'm going west. Now when it comes to your different parts of your steering wheel, it's kind of complicated over here, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. This is your, your turn signal, left and right obviously. You push this in to wash your main windshield wipers. There's a rear windshield wiper washer back here. You turn on your rear windshield wipers in the front of it. You spin this turn on your windshield wipers and then you have your heated steering wheel as well as your tilting and then your cruise control. I found this cruise control to be way less complicated than every other car I've owned which is close to 15 if I remember correctly. Everything from Dodges, Mitsubishis, Hondas, oh my gosh, Ford, Volvo and everything else in between. This was very easy. Once I'm at the speed I want, I push it down. It stays. When I want to stop doing that, I can push it away or obviously push the brake or gas pedal. If you want to increase the speed, you go click up one, it'll go up once one mile an hour. If you go twice, it'll go about three to five miles an hour. So you can literally cruise through the entire highway without having to adjust anything. And as far as the windshield wiper goes, it does have rain sensing wiper blades. Now I had that in my Volvo, but it didn't work so well and it's it was an older Volvo, but even with the newer ones I've heard, going under bridges, the Volvo thinks it's a, it's a, it's raining and it'll turn on the wipers. This one's a lot more perceptive and a lot more intelligent. I put it on the lowest setting right there. It's not off. And it found when it was sprinkling, it turned them on a little bit. When the car in front of me was splashing more, it turned them on a little faster. When it completely stopped, the wiper stopped. It was actually pretty intelligent. I, I will admit, I was a little skeptical, but it worked pretty well. So to pop the hood, you go up underneath, and there you go. This has a four-cylinder 2.0 turbo engine, and it's plenty of speed, plenty of power, and plenty of gusto to get you where you need to go. And for those who don't know much about engines, that's your oil dipstick, your oil fill, your coolant fill, don't ever touch that when the engine's hot. 
your air intake is right here. That feeds the engine the air. And also, that's the height you can go before you, in a puddle, before you're going to shut your engine off. <laughs> Don't go higher than about here on this car, because if water gets in your air intake, it'll cut your engine off. And then your battery looks like it is over here. Very clean, very nice, very well-performing engine. Can't complain about it. I've been pushing it around, trying to see everything I could do to it, and there's really no complaints. And there's your windshield washer. And then up here, you have programmable garage door opener, plenty of lighting. You have your panoramic roof, which is phenomenal. You push this button and get yourself a little bit of shade. And then that also obviously is something I leave open all the time. And you can also crack the window just a little bit to get some air. You can also put it all the way back and get tons of air. Now that's something that most people appreciate, but don't also know that the tracks to these windows need to be cleaned regularly and you need to check these often because they will hold a lot of water in there and they have to run the gutters and get the water out. So check your gutters very often on your skylights, sky windows, panoramic sunroofs and all those. Up here on the, on the ceiling, you have the both lights for both sides, the middle light, turn them off. You can turn all the lights off regardless of the doors are open or closed, the rear lights. Then you have your little SOS button in an emergency. And then you have your information button, which you can connect to a representative to ask questions on how your Mercedes works. And then a repair button needed, which is pretty intuitive and kind of insane. Obviously your sunglasses light our sunglasses uh, compartment. And underneath you have your garage door openers where you can program them to work with your garage door. And with the headlight switch, you really don't have to do much more than auto. But if you do choose to do it manually, we have the high and low beam switch here. And then we have the parking lamps, license plate and instrument cluster here. And then the left and right standing lamps. A lot of those um, on most cars are the ones that are on when you turn off the car they're just like a light that stands stays on for some reason if you want the left or the right one on there you go and then your fog lights uh, it's actually rear fog lights on this one the GLC 300 it's amazing it's elegant it's rugged it's simplified it's complicated it's all in one I mean, you have this beautiful emblem on the front, as well as the great statement right there. Not to mention, Dimer's signature on the windshield. Part of the creative team with the whole Mercedes-Benz company. They did create the first car, after all, in the world. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. And I've driven over 15 different cars in my life, probably more. I've owned Swedish, Japanese, American, and I've driven Korean cars. It's just nothing, nothing like it. Nothing does it quite like the Germans. I highly recommend it.